I've always enjoyed the peace of camping alone. There's something about the silence, the rawness of nature, that just feels different when you're on your own. My friends think I'm crazy to do it, especially in a place as remote as Montana, where the woods are deep and wild. But I find it calming. So, I packed my bag, loaded up with enough supplies for a few days, and headed off the beaten path. The area I chose was miles away from any designated trails or popular campsites. I wanted pure isolation, somewhere I could be completely alone with nature. I set up my tent in a small clearing surrounded by tall, thick trees. The only sounds were the wind rustling through the branches and the occasional calls of birds in the distance. I felt a sense of peace as I finished setting up camp, cooked a quick meal over my portable stove, and watched the sky darken. When night fell, everything went quiet. That's one thing about the wilderness at night. When it gets dark, it's pitch black, and silence takes over like a thick blanket. The stars above were brilliant, and I lay on my back for a while, just taking it all in. Eventually, I crawled into my tent, zipped myself into my sleeping bag, and drifted off to sleep, feeling safe and at peace. I don't know how long I'd been asleep, but at some point, I woke up suddenly. I don't know what woke me. Maybe it was some instinct, or maybe I heard something without fully realizing it. My heart was pounding, and I lay there, listening. At first, I didn't hear anything unusual, just the normal sounds of the forest at night. But then I heard it, a soft, steady crunching sound, like footsteps, outside my tent. My breath caught, and I felt my entire body tense up. My first thought was that it was just an animal, a deer, maybe, or a raccoon. But the more I listened, the clearer it became that these weren't the footsteps of an animal. The sound was too deliberate, too measured. These were human footsteps, soft and cautious, as if someone was trying not to be noticed. I lay there, completely still, my mind racing. Why would anyone be out here, in the middle of nowhere, in the dead of night? And why were they circling my tent? My heart was pounding so hard that I was afraid the sound of it would give me away. I told myself to stay calm, to stay quiet. Maybe, just maybe, they'd leave if they thought no one was awake. The footsteps continued, slow and steady, moving around my tent in a circle. Whoever was out there wasn't in any hurry. They paused occasionally, and I could almost sense them standing right outside, listening. I wanted to reach for my flashlight, but I was terrified that even the smallest movement would give me away. Instead, I just lay there, gripping my pocket knife in my hand, feeling completely vulnerable. At one point, the footsteps stopped directly behind my head, just a few inches away from where I was lying. The silence felt so thick, it was almost suffocating. I could hear faint breathing, slow and controlled, like someone trying to stay quiet. It felt like hours passed with them just standing there, listening. And then, after what felt like an eternity, the footsteps began moving again. This time, they were heading away from my tent. I strained to listen, following the sound as it grew fainter and fainter, until finally, I couldn't hear them at all. I lay there, every muscle in my body tense, waiting to make sure they were really gone. Once I was sure they weren't coming back, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. But I was still terrified. There was no way I was going to go back to sleep after that. I stayed lying down, clutching my pocket knife in one hand and listening to every tiny sound outside. The night dragged on slowly, and I lay awake, waiting for the first light of dawn. When morning finally came, I slowly unzipped the tent and stepped outside, feeling the cool morning air on my face. The forest was quiet, peaceful, as if nothing had happened. But the moment I looked down, my stomach turned. There, in the dirt around my tent, were deep, clear boot prints. They circled my tent, tracing the exact path I'd heard in the night. And the strangest part? They led back into the woods, 
toward the deeper part of the forest. There were no signs of anyone coming from a trail, no prints leading to a camp or back to a road. I tried to make sense of it, but I couldn't. I knew there was no logical reason for anyone to be wandering out there in the middle of the night, miles from civilization, with no sign of a campsite or any other gear. I packed up my things as quickly as possible, feeling like I was being watched the whole time. Every snap of a twig or rustle of leaves made my heart race. As I hiked back to my car, I kept looking over my shoulder, half expecting to see someone following me. By the time I finally made it back to the road and my car, I felt an overwhelming sense of relief. I climbed in, locked the doors, and drove off without looking back. That was the last time I ever went camping alone. It was supposed to be a fun weekend camping trip with friends. There were five of us, close buddies from college who hadn't seen each other in a while. We decided to head into the mountains, away from the noise and rush of the city, just to enjoy some peace and fresh air. We packed everything we'd need, tents, sleeping bags, food, and a few campfire stories to share around the fire. The first night went smoothly. We set up camp in a beautiful, flat spot with a perfect view of the valley below. We made a small campfire, roasted marshmallows, and talked late into the night. We laughed, shared old memories, and caught up on each other's lives. I felt completely at ease. There's something special about being out in nature with people you trust. The next day, we went on a long hike, climbing higher up the mountain trails. By the time we got back to camp in the evening, we were exhausted. One of my friends suggested we move our camp to a new spot with a better view. We all agreed, thinking it would be great to wake up to a beautiful sunrise. We found a spot near a cliff edge that looked out over the valley and decided to set up our tents there. The ground was a bit sloped, but we didn't think much of it. It seemed stable enough, and we were eager to settle down and rest. As the sun set, the view was breathtaking. We could see the sky change colors from blue to pink and orange, casting a soft glow over the mountains and the valley below. It felt like the perfect end to a tiring day. We ate a quick dinner, shared a few more stories, and then crawled into our tents, ready to get some sleep. I don't know what time it was, but sometime in the middle of the night, I woke up to a strange rumbling noise. At first, I thought it was thunder, though the sky had been clear all day. I lay there, trying to convince myself it was just my imagination. But then I felt something else, a slight shift, almost like my body was sliding down my sleeping bag. I sat up, feeling the ground under me give way, and realized that the entire campsite was starting to move. Panicked, I unzipped my tent and looked outside. The ground around us was crumbling, sliding slowly but steadily toward the edge of the cliff. The whole area we were camped on was slipping, almost like it was being peeled away from the mountainside. I could feel my stomach tighten with fear. I knew that if we didn't act fast, we'd go right over the cliff with it. I shouted to my friends, waking them up. Get up! The ground's giving way. I yelled, my voice shaky. They scrambled out of their tents, their faces filled with confusion and panic. One friend nearly tripped, his feet slipping in the loose dirt. We were all wide-eyed, realizing we were in serious danger. The cliff edge was only about 20 feet away, but in the darkness, it felt much closer. We tried to stay calm, but the ground under our feet was unstable, and every step felt like it could be the one that sent us tumbling over the edge. I could feel my heart pounding, every instinct in my body telling me to move quickly but carefully. We tried to grab what we could, our backpacks, a flashlight or two, but most of our gear had already started to slide toward the cliff. The tents were collapsing, the poles bending as they were dragged down by the shifting earth. I knew we couldn't waste time trying to save our things. All that mattered was getting ourselves to safety. We climbed toward a rocky outcropping nearby, struggling to keep our footing. The loose dirt made it difficult to move, 
and I could feel my boots slipping with every step. My hands were shaking, and I could hear one of my friends breathing heavily behind me. Finally, we reached the rocks and clambered onto them, feeling some relief as we found solid ground. From our perch on the rocks, we watched in horror as our campsite continued to slide down the slope. In the faint moonlight, we could see our tents and gear disappear over the cliff edge, swallowed by the darkness below. It was a surreal moment. One second our campsite was there, and the next it was gone. Just like that, everything we'd brought was lost. We stayed on that rocky outcrop for the rest of the night, huddled together in silence. None of us could sleep. We were too shaken, too afraid to even close our eyes. Every sound, every gust of wind made us jump. I kept imagining the ground beneath us starting to slide again, but thankfully, the rocks held steady. When dawn finally broke, we were able to see the full extent of the landslide. A huge section of the slope where we'd camped had broken away, leaving a raw, jagged scar on the mountainside. We could see pieces of our tents, scattered far below on the rocky ground. It was a sobering sight. I felt incredibly lucky that we'd woken up in time and gotten off that slope before it was too late. We carefully made our way down the mountain that morning, shaken but grateful to be safe. As we walked, none of us said much. The memory of that night stayed with me for a long time. I'd always thought of the mountains as strong and stable, but that night taught me how fragile they can be. I haven't camped near a cliff since. I always loved the thrill of solo camping. There was something special about being alone in nature, surrounded by tall trees and the sounds of the forest. Felt like freedom. One summer, I decided to go to a remote area in the Appalachian Mountains. I packed my backpack with camping gear, food, and my favorite book, and then I set off on a hike. The trail was rough, winding through thick woods, but I didn't mind. I enjoyed every step, feeling more alive with each moment. After hours of hiking, I finally found a perfect spot beside a small stream. It was peaceful, the water gently flowing over rocks. I set up my tent, made a small fire, and cooked some dinner. As the sun went down, the sky turned a beautiful shade of orange and purple. I felt so relaxed watching the flames dance. That first night was perfect. I sat by the fire, listening to the sounds of the forest. Crickets chirped, and I could hear the occasional rustle of leaves in the breeze. I felt safe and at ease, completely immersed in nature. As the stars filled the sky, I crawled into my tent, ready to sleep. But around midnight, I woke up suddenly. I don't know why, but something felt off. I listened carefully my heart beating faster in the silence. That's when I heard it. Soft footsteps outside my tent. My heart raced as I tried to convince myself it was just an animal, maybe a deer wandering through. But the footsteps were too slow, too deliberate. I lay still, my breath shallow, and strained to hear more. The footsteps circled my tent, just outside the thin fabric. I could feel a chill creeping up my spine, and I had to fight the urge to panic. What could it be? I peeked through the tiny opening of my tent, the moonlight spilling in and casting eerie shadows. There, just beyond the edge of the light, I saw shoes, worn, dirty shoes moving slowly. It looked like a person was walking in circles around my tent, but I couldn't see their face or body, just those shoes. They moved carefully, as if they were trying to be quiet, but the soft crunch of leaves betrayed their presence. I felt paralyzed by fear. I had never experienced anything like this before. I could hardly breathe, and my mind raced with thoughts. Who could it be? Was it someone who wanted to harm me? Or maybe someone who had lost their way in the woods? I listened for any sounds that would help me make sense of the situation, but there was only silence, except for those eerie footsteps. They continued their slow circling, and I felt the urge to call out, to demand to know who was there. 
but I knew that would only invite danger. I stayed quiet, hoping the figure would leave. Minutes felt like hours as I lay frozen in fear, watching those shoes move in the shadows. Then, just as suddenly as it started, the footsteps stopped. The silence that followed was deafening. I held my breath, straining to hear anything, but it was just the sound of my own heart pounding in my chest. After what felt like an eternity, I mustered the courage to grab my flashlight. I needed to see what was happening outside my tent. I unzipped the entrance slowly, trying not to make any noise. The night air was cool against my skin, sending shivers down my spine. I peeked out, the beam of my flashlight cutting through the darkness. The area around my tent was empty. There were no signs of anyone. No footprints in the dirt, no broken branches, nothing. Just the quiet whisper of the wind through the trees. I scanned the area, heart racing, but it was as if the figure had vanished into thin air. Still feeling uneasy, I decided to pack my things. I didn't want to stay there another minute. My hands shook as I rolled up my sleeping bag and packed my gear. Every sound made me jump. Every rustle in the bushes, every snap of a twig. I felt like I was being watched, even though I couldn't see anyone. As dawn broke, I finally finished packing and started my hike back. The forest looked different in the morning light. The vibrant greens and browns were a stark contrast to the fear I felt just hours before. But I couldn't shake the feeling of being followed, as if someone was right behind me, lurking in the shadows of the trees. I hurried along the trail, taking quick glances over my shoulder. Each step felt heavy, and I wanted to run, but I forced myself to stay calm and steady. I needed to get out of there. The sun rose higher, and soon I reached the main trail, where I encountered a couple of hikers. Their presence brought me a small sense of relief. After that experience, I never went camping alone again. The thought of what I encountered that night haunted me. What did I see? Was it just my imagination, or was someone truly out there? I still wonder about the figure in the dark and what their intentions were. I learned that nature can be beautiful and peaceful, but it can also hold secrets that can chill you to the bone. A few years ago, my friends and I planned a camping trip deep in a national forest. We wanted to escape the busy city and experience nature, far away from people and noise. We were a group of five all-close friends who had camped together before. We heard about a beautiful, deserted spot by an old, rarely used trail, so we decided to give it a try. After a long drive, we arrived at the forest and began our hike. The trees were tall and thick, their leaves forming a green canopy over us, letting only a few beams of sunlight through. It was beautiful but also a little eerie, with the silence broken only by our footsteps and the occasional bird. We hiked for hours, finally setting up our campsite near a small lake. The water was clear and calm, and the place felt like it was untouched. The first two days were perfect. We swam in the lake, explored the woods nearby, and cooked over a campfire. The peacefulness of the forest was exactly what we had hoped for. We stayed up late, talking and laughing by the fire, and slept deeply, listening to the soft sounds of the forest at night. On the third day, we decided to hike even further into the forest. We wanted to see if we could find any interesting spots or hidden views. We walked for hours, wandering off the main path and into thicker parts of the woods. Then, out of nowhere, we stumbled upon something strange, an old campsite. At first, we thought it was just an abandoned site that someone had left. But as we looked closer, things didn't make sense. There was a tent, a small fire pit, and a backpack left open on the ground. It looked like someone had just left, but everything was dusty and weathered, like it had been sitting there for weeks. Yet, oddly enough, nothing was touched or scattered. The food was still there, clothes were neatly folded inside the tent, and even a map was lying on top of a sleeping bag. We were confused. If someone had left the campsite for a long time, 
animals would have gotten into it, right? But nothing looked disturbed. My friend, James, picked up the map and looked it over. It was a detailed map of the forest showing trails and even small paths, but it had no marks on it. No signs that anyone had been using it to find their way. We called out, thinking maybe the person who set up camp was nearby, but no one answered. We searched the area, checking the bushes and calling out louder, but there was nothing. It felt wrong like we were trespassing in someone's private space. A strange feeling of unease settled over us, making the quiet forest feel heavier. Why would someone leave their camp behind like this? After a few minutes, we decided to move on. None of us said much as we hiked back, each of us deep in thought. But the image of that abandoned camp was stuck in my mind. That night, back at our own campsite, things felt different. We tried to act like everything was normal, but I could tell my friends were all uneasy. The forest, which had felt peaceful before, now felt watchful. We set up our campfire and tried to joke around to shake off the strange feeling, but it didn't work. The quiet seemed louder, the shadows darker. Around midnight, as we were sitting around the fire, we heard a rustling sound in the bushes nearby. We all froze, our laughter stopping in an instant. James whispered, Did anyone else hear that? We nodded, straining our ears to listen. Another rustle, closer this time. It sounded like something, or someone, was moving through the bushes, but we couldn't see anything. My heart began to pound. In the darkness, every sound felt magnified. One of my friends, Aaron, grabbed a flashlight and aimed it towards the bushes. The beam cut through the darkness, illuminating only trees and shadows. But then he gasped, his hand shaking as he lowered the light. I, I saw someone, he stammered, his face pale, just standing there, watching us. The rest of us quickly shined our lights in the same direction, but there was nothing, just trees and silence. We called out, but no one answered. The thought of someone hiding in the shadows, silently watching us, made my skin crawl. None of us could shake the fear. We sat close to the fire, our flashlights in hand, and stayed up, too afraid to sleep. Every little noise made us jump. The soft crack of a branch, the rustle of leaves in the wind. All of it felt like it was closing in on us. We tried to convince ourselves it was just our imaginations, that Aaron had seen a shadow and nothing more. But deep down, we all felt it, like someone was out there, just beyond our sight. As soon as the first light of dawn appeared, we packed up our things and left. The walk back to the trail felt endless. I kept glancing over my shoulder, feeling like someone was watching us, following us even. When we finally reached the trailhead and saw other hikers, I felt an immense sense of relief. That experience haunted me. I couldn't stop thinking about that abandoned campsite or the shadow Aaron had seen. What happened to the person who left all their belongings behind? Were they still out there wandering the woods? Or was it someone else? Someone who didn't want us to be there? I'll never know. But that trip changed the way I felt about camping in remote places. The forest, once a place of peace, now held a secret that I didn't want to understand. I live near the Cascade Mountains in the Northwest. I don't camp very often anymore since I've gotten older, but I try to make it out there about once a year. I'm more of a relax in the backyard kind of person now, but heading into the mountains always seemed worth the effort whenever I did go. A couple of years back, I went out in the early fall. The trail I picked was only about a 20 minute drive from my place. I parked in a small dirt lot, grabbed my gear, and started my hike. It was a bit colder than I expected, but the trail was really pleasant. When I reached the campsite, I put my stuff down and set up my tent. It was a small clearing, surrounded by trees. There were no other campers around, so it looked like I was the only one out there. With the sun still high in the sky, 
I decided to take a quick break and then follow a narrow side path that led to a viewpoint overlooking the mountains. I'd read online before leaving that it was only about a 10-minute walk from the site, so I didn't take much, just my water bottle and a basic pack. When I got to the overlook, I sat down and took in the view for about half an hour. There was no sign of anyone else having been out there, which made sense since the weather was starting to cool down. Once I was ready, I headed back to the campsite. When I returned to the clearing, something felt off. Things weren't exactly the way I had left them. I checked around for anything missing or noticeably moved, but nothing was gone. I started to wonder if I was just imagining things. The little details that felt wrong were things I could have easily remembered incorrectly. For instance, I was pretty sure I had zipped my tent before leaving, but when I came back, it was unzipped. That's not something an animal could do, and there were no obvious signs of anyone passing through. The logical explanation was that I hadn't zipped it up, even though I was sure I had. I tried to shake off the feeling and settle down, setting up my chair and arranging some rocks for a fire pit as the sun began to set and the cold crept in. I heated some water for tea and just sat there thinking for a while. After about an hour, I heard footsteps. I turned toward the sound, coming from the direction of the trail, but it was too dark to see past the clearing. As I listened, it sounded like someone was approaching the campsite but then the noise stopped. It felt like whoever it was had paused and was watching me from the trail. Then, the footsteps resumed, but this time they veered away from the trail, moving off to the side of the clearing. I started to feel uneasy. The thought of everything being out of place earlier was coming back to me now that I knew someone else was out here. I didn't know if they had been out there before or had just arrived, and that uncertainty made it worse. I had no idea what was going on. Then, I heard the footsteps again, louder this time, approaching from the other side of the campsite. I glanced in that direction, but before I could react, I heard another set of footsteps behind me. Both sets were quiet, deliberate, like they didn't want to be noticed. It was clear they were trying to sneak up on me. I quickly unzipped my backpack and pulled out the handgun I carried only for emergencies. I stood up and aimed it toward the trees where I'd heard one of them coming from. I didn't say a word, not wanting to reveal the fear in my voice. I knew they could see me in the firelight, and I was hoping the sight of the gun would be enough to make them think twice about whatever they were planning. Everything went silent, the footsteps stopped. I scanned the area, looking for any sign of movement. After what felt like forever with no noise, I started packing my things careful to keep my weapon within reach at all times. I hadn't heard them leave, so I knew they were still out there, watching. Once I got what I could into my pack, I made my way toward the trail, leaving only the tent behind. From what I could tell, they didn't follow me. Once I was a good distance away, I turned on my flashlight and hurried the rest of the way to my car. To sum it up, the police weren't much help. Whoever those two people were, they never showed themselves or did anything overt. Don't get me wrong, it was clear they had bad intentions, but there wasn't enough to go on. After that experience and hearing about others who've gone through similar situations, I don't think I'll ever camp alone again. This occurred earlier this summer. My close friend, Sam, and I are both in university and enjoy spending time outdoors. We'd often go hiking or occasionally camping when our schedules allowed. So, this summer break, after classes ended, we decided to go camping by a lake that was a few hours away from home. While we weren't total camping experts, we weren't beginners either. We knew how to handle ourselves and didn't plan to stay longer than necessary. We started on the trail in the morning, prepared to spend two nights there. The hike took a bit longer than expected, but we reached the lake by midday. I had heard that there were many different trails leading to the lake, given its large size, and there were so many camping spots that it was unlikely to run into other campers. We preferred keeping to ourselves, so when we arrived and saw no one around, we were relieved. The first hour, we just relaxed from the hike. 
Then we set up our tents in a clearing near the tree line, just off the shore. By then, the sun had begun to set, so Sam started a fire while I went out to gather more sticks to keep it going. I wandered a short distance from our campsite, gathering dry wood, when I suddenly heard something ahead of me. I looked up. Though it was getting darker, I could still make out most of the forest, and far in the distance, there seemed to be a person. After a few moments, I was sure it was someone walking out there among the trees. I hurried back to the campsite and told Sam what I'd seen. We weren't scared, just unsettled by the oddity of it. It seemed strange for someone to be walking deep in the woods and not along the lakeside trail. About 15 minutes later, as the last bit of daylight faded and darkness settled over the area, we heard footsteps approaching. Moments later, a man stepped into the light from our fire. He looked to be in his mid-thirties with a beard and shoulder-length hair. Right away, I had an uneasy feeling about him. He smiled at us from across the fire and asked if we knew how to get to a particular location. The name sounded like it could be a trail, but I didn't recognize it. Sorry, I'm not familiar with that, I said quietly. The man kept smiling for a moment longer, then turned and walked back into the woods without another word. Sam and I exchanged confused glances. After he was gone, Sam asked if it was the same person I had seen earlier. I wasn't sure, but it likely was. We spent the rest of the evening sitting by the fire, trying to come up with reasons why the man had approached us like that. The only explanation we could think of was that he might have been lost or needed help once it got dark. But his demeanor didn't fit that. He didn't seem desperate at all, and asking just one question before leaving didn't add up. We started to feel a bit creeped out, so we dropped the topic as it got later. We let the fire die down and climbed into our tents. I tried to sleep, but I couldn't relax. Something about the situation made me feel on edge, and I kept listening to the sounds outside. After about two hours, I heard it again, footsteps moving toward us. I called out to Sam, then rushed out of my tent. Standing just a few feet away was a figure. Within seconds, they turned and sprinted back into the woods, vanishing into the darkness. Sam came out just in time to hear the footsteps retreating, but he said he had a bad feeling as soon as I yelled his name. That night, we packed up our gear and waited until dawn before leaving the forest. We never found out who that man was or what he was really after. If I hadn't stayed awake, we might not have made it out of those woods. I had always liked being outdoors, but camping was something I rarely did alone. One weekend, though, I decided to go by myself, just to get away from the constant noise of the city. The campsite was at a national park a couple hours away from home, a place known for its quiet, secluded spots. I figured it would be peaceful. I got there around midday, parked the car in a small lot, and hiked a short trail to the spot I had picked out online. It wasn't far, maybe half a mile in, surrounded by thick trees with only a small clearing for the tent. No one else was around, which was exactly what I wanted. The air was crisp, colder than I expected, but not too uncomfortable. I set up the tent quickly and gathered some firewood, planning to get everything ready before dark. By the time the sun began to dip below the trees, I had a small fire going. The woods were still, not even the usual rustle of animals or the wind through the trees. I noticed the silence but didn't think much of it. I warmed up some food and sat by the fire, watching the flames dance and flicker in the darkening evening. The stillness started to feel a bit heavy, but I told myself it was just because I wasn't used to being out here alone. It was almost too quiet. That's when I first heard it. A faint rustling from behind me, deep in the woods. I didn't turn immediately, thinking it was probably just some animal passing through. But then the sound came again, closer this time. I turned to look, squinting into the trees, but saw nothing. My heart rate picked up a little, but I told myself it was nothing. The firelight only reached so far, and beyond that was just blackness. I sat back down, 
trying to relax, telling myself that I was overthinking. But the rustling didn't stop. It was slow and deliberate like something or someone was moving carefully through the woods. My mind raced through possibilities, trying to settle on something that didn't feel wrong. But every explanation seemed off. I didn't have any nearby neighbors. There was no reason for anyone to be out here this late. The sound was now unmistakably coming from just beyond the tree line. It wasn't random movement. It was calculated, and it seemed like it was circling my camp. I stood up, trying to focus on the source of the noise, but the firelight made it difficult to see far. Every few seconds, the sound would stop, then start again from a different direction. There was a sinking feeling in my stomach. I had no idea what was out there, but I knew something was watching. I grabbed my flashlight and shone it toward the trees, hoping to catch a glimpse of whatever it was. The beam cut through the darkness, but there was nothing, just trees. The noise had stopped now completely. The stillness had returned, but this time it felt suffocating. I kept the flashlight pointed ahead, waiting for something to move. Then I heard it again, but much closer, this time right at the edge of the clearing. A branch snapped, and my heart skipped a beat. I froze, barely breathing. Slowly, I scanned the edge of the camp with the light, but there was still nothing. And then the realization hit me. Whatever was out there had been circling closer and closer, each time getting near enough to the light, but staying just out of sight. My instincts kicked in, telling me to leave. I started packing up my gear as quickly as I could, moving in a daze knowing I couldn't stay here. I threw what I could into my backpack, leaving most things behind. The noise started again, this time more erratic, like whatever was out there had realized I was about to leave. The feeling of being hunted was undeniable now. I didn't want to wait around to find out what was out there. With the backpack slung over my shoulder, I grabbed the flashlight and bolted down the trail. The sound of movement behind me didn't stop. It was as if something was following, keeping pace just out of sight, always in the dark. I didn't turn back. I didn't need to. I knew something was there. The trail seemed longer than before, but I didn't slow down until I finally saw the reflection of my car's headlights in the distance. I reached the parking lot and jumped into the driver's seat, locking the doors behind me. I looked back toward the trail for a moment, but the forest was still and silent again, just like it had been earlier. I didn't wait around to think about it. I drove off, speeding down the road, away from that place. Whatever had been out there wasn't something I wanted to understand. It had watched me, circled me, and followed me all the way to the edge of safety. I never found out what it was, and I'm not sure I ever want to. All I know is, I'll never go camping alone again. I'll never forget that night. It was supposed to be a simple camping trip, something to clear my head after a tough few months. I drove out to a state park with a lake I'd fished at as a kid, miles from anywhere. No phone reception, just peace and quiet. Perfect. The day had gone great. I set up my tent, fished a little, read a book, and watched the sun start to dip below the trees. Around dusk, I saw another guy in the distance, just walking along the edge of the woods near my sight. He didn't look like a ranger, too scruffy with a heavy pack and this big, stained hoodie. I nodded at him, but he didn't respond, just kept staring at me until I looked away, feeling weirdly exposed. A few minutes later, I glanced back, and he was gone. I tried not to think much of it. Maybe he was just some other camper passing through. As darkness settled, I started up a fire and settled into my chair, but something just felt off. Every little noise around me felt amplified. The crackling of branches, rustling of leaves. I kept glancing into the woods, expecting to see the guy pop back out. But everything stayed quiet. Hours passed, and by midnight I was ready to call it a night. I just climbed into my tent and zipped it up when I heard footsteps. Slow, deliberate crunches on the leaves. 
They stopped just outside my tent. I held my breath, straining to listen. Whoever it was didn't make a sound, just stood there. I thought maybe it was an animal, but then I heard something metallic, a slow scraping noise. I stayed frozen, my mind racing. I couldn't see a thing through the tent fabric. My heart pounded as the sound continued, scraping metal against metal, like a knife being sharpened. My flashlight was buried somewhere at the bottom of my bag, and I didn't dare move to get it. I just sat there, hoping he'd think I was asleep. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the scraping stopped. I held my breath, listening, and then I heard him walk off, his footsteps fading back into the woods. I don't know how long I sat there, clutching my knees, waiting to see if he'd come back. But the night stayed silent. When the first light started seeping through the trees, I finally found the courage to unzip my tent and look around. There were footprints in the dirt, big and deep, circling my tent. And right next to my fire pit, I found a rusty, serrated hunting knife. I grabbed my things, threw them in my car, and didn't look back. Never went back to that park again. To this day, I wonder if he just wanted to scare me, or if I got lucky and he wanted something else entirely. A few years ago, I went camping with a group of friends in a remote area of National Forest Land. It was one of those spontaneous trips where we just packed up and hit the road without too much planning. The spot we found was far from any marked trails or campgrounds, which is exactly what we wanted, just us and the wilderness. The forest around us was dense, thick with trees and underbrush, and we set up our tents in a small clearing by a creek. It felt isolated in the best way, like the whole world was miles away. The first day and night were uneventful. We spent the day hiking around, exploring, and cooking over the fire as the sun went down. By the time night fell, everything seemed peaceful. The only sounds were the creek flowing nearby and the occasional rustle of leaves as a breeze passed through. Around midnight, we all turned in for the night. A few hours later, I woke up suddenly, unsure of what stirred me. My tent felt colder, and there was this eerie quietness around. I lay there, just listening, when I heard it, slow, deliberate footsteps crunching leaves nearby. My first thought was that one of my friends had gotten up to use the bathroom or check on something, but the footsteps didn't sound right. They were too cautious, almost sneaky, like someone trying not to be noticed but still close enough that I could hear every step. I kept listening, hoping it would just go away, but instead, it came closer, circling our camp. I could tell it was outside my tent, just lingering. The steps would stop for a while, then start again. My mind started racing, thinking of all the possible reasons someone would be out here at this hour, deep in the forest, near a remote, unmarked campsite that we thought only we knew about. After a while, the footsteps moved away, and everything was quiet again. I thought maybe it was a hiker or a hunter who accidentally stumbled upon our camp and just kept going. But a part of me couldn't shake the feeling that someone had intentionally been watching us. The next day, I mentioned it to my friends, but we brushed it off. We all figured it was just an animal or maybe even my imagination running wild. The day went by, and we continued with our camping plans, hiking further into the woods. But as night fell again, I started feeling that tension in the air, the same strange unease from the night before. This time, everyone went to bed a little earlier, tired from the long hike. Sometime in the early hours, I was awoken again, but this time it wasn't just me. My friend in the tent next to mine whispered my name, asking if I was awake. She had heard the footsteps too, creeping around the edge of our camp. I whispered back, trying to keep calm, and just listened. The footsteps were back, and this time, they were closer and more deliberate. They'd stop right in front of a tent, then slowly move around, pausing as if whoever was out there was listening or maybe even peeking inside. We sat frozen, barely breathing. 
the only thing separating us from whoever or whatever was a thin layer of fabric. Minutes went by in silence. Then, a loud snap of a branch broke the tension, and we heard hurried footsteps running off into the woods. We stayed up the rest of the night, clutching whatever we could find for defense. A pocket knife, a rock, anything. None of us dared to leave the tents until dawn. In the morning, we inspected the area around our camp. That's when we saw it. There were large boot prints around our tents, fresh enough to be from last night. They circled each tent, then led off toward the forest, where they disappeared into the trees. We all agreed it was time to pack up and leave. As we were dismantling our tents, we noticed something else. One of our backpacks, which had been outside by the fire pit, was gone. We searched the area, calling out to see if anyone had moved it, but nobody had touched it. It was just gone. The hike back to our car felt endless. Every little sound in the woods made us jump, and we constantly felt like we were being watched. By the time we reached the car, we were all exhausted mentally and physically, and we didn't say much on the drive home. Later, we reported it to the local rangers, but they shrugged it off as some random person who might have been lost or just messing around. But I couldn't shake the feeling that whoever it was had found us on purpose, maybe even followed us into the woods. It wasn't just a random hiker or an accident. We'd gone looking for isolation and we found it, but something or someone was out there too watching us in the night. Recently, I moved into a new apartment. Since I've been here, I've been experiencing something strange. Sleep paralysis. Whenever it happens, it feels as if someone is there with me. And even though I can't see anyone, I feel a touch on my side and back, like gentle fingers pressing against me. The feeling was so strong and unsettling that I gave up on sleeping in my bedroom altogether. Now, I only go in there when I really have to. But the sleep paralysis isn't the only thing that's happened. A few months ago, something very unsettling took place. I was lying in bed, just staring around the room, and in the reflection of my TV screen, I noticed something odd. There was a figure very small, about three feet tall, just standing there. It was staring straight at me. The second I noticed it, the figure ducked down and disappeared from view so fast it didn't seem human. I jumped up, heart racing, and looked under my bed. But there was nothing there, nothing at all. This isn't the first time I've experienced things like this. Even when I was a child, I had similar encounters. I remember one particular nightmare where I saw a small figure, cloaked and hooded, about the size of a young child. I ran toward it, wanting to understand what it was. But before I could get close, I felt a sharp pain on my left side. That's when I woke up. When I opened my eyes, I saw something in the darkness. Just a foot away from me, a shadowy figure stood, no taller than three feet. I watched it for a few seconds, frozen, and then it vanished as if it had never been there. Even now, when I get sleep paralysis, I often feel that same sharp pain on the same side where I was hurt in that dream. Eventually, Things got so bad that I had no choice but to leave my bedroom. Those last few nights in there were terrifying. One night, I felt like something was lying down in bed beside me, pressing into the mattress. It was heavy enough that I could feel the weight moving beside me. Then, the next night, I saw something even more frightening. I woke up, looked around, and in the reflection of my mirror, I saw a small hand, like a child's, reaching out from under my bed, trying to grab me. The next day, things took an even stranger turn. My roommate told me that one of his co-workers had a weird experience while closing the restaurant alone. He was standing by the counter when a small figure reached out from beneath it and grabbed his leg. The figure tried to grab him again. He was always alone when this happened, and there wasn't enough space for anyone to hide there. My roommate and I hadn't spoken about my experiences, and I hadn't shared what was happening to me. But I couldn't shake the feeling that there was a connection between my experiences and his co-workers. For as long as I can remember, 
Strange things like this have followed me. I don't know if it's a single entity or multiple beings, but it feels like something always finds me, no matter where I go. Sometimes, I have dreams where a man comes up to me, speaks to me, and wakes me up. Other times, I hear strange voices coming from distant parts of the house. It doesn't stop there. Sometimes, while home alone, I hear clapping sounds, like someone clapping in odd rhythms. Recently, even though I've been sleeping in the living room with my cats, I've been woken up twice by a voice whispering directly in my ear. The last time, it was so loud it actually hurt. One night, feeling frustrated and desperate, I had a few drinks and ended up talking to whatever was haunting me. I know it wasn't smart, but I was fed up. I told it that it was a coward for hiding, laughed, and said I'd find it. The next morning, it answered me. A loud voice shouted in my ear, Aren't you going to laugh at me now? Since then, strange things have been happening around the house. Lights flicker on and off and objects move on their own. My cats sometimes chase or growl at things I can't see. A few weeks ago, I saw something else unusual. While watching TV with my roommate, I noticed something small darting behind my mattress. I had been staying in the living room for a while, but whatever I saw was tiny, no more than half a foot tall. When we got up to look, there was nothing there. I searched every inch of the room, tore it apart, but found absolutely nothing. People have suggested different explanations. Some say it's hallucinations, others say it's sleep paralysis or paranoia. But I don't know what to think anymore. It's not only been paranormal encounters. One time, I saw what I believe was an alien. It was around two in the morning, and I was walking home. Near a house, I noticed a tall, thin figure crouching by a window. It had a tear-shaped head, huge black eyes, almost no nose or mouth, and no ears that I could see. It was at least eight or nine feet tall. Another time, I woke up to find my shirt on backward and blood in my mouth. I still don't know if these things are connected, if they're real, or if it's all in my mind. But whatever it is, it keeps happening, and it keeps getting stranger. One day, I had a strange experience while hiking on Peabody Creek Trail, and it's something I can't forget. It was such an odd event, and I think anyone who enjoys stories about unusual or mysterious encounters might find it interesting. I live in a small town called Port Angeles with about 20,000 residents. Olympic National Park is close by, practically in our backyard, and it's filled with different trails and beautiful scenery. Near the park's visitor center, there's a small half-mile loop trail that connects back to where you started. Partway through this loop, there's another trail that branches off. This one's called Peabody Creek Trail. Peabody Creek Trail is around 2.5 miles long, almost 2.7 miles if you measure it closely. I'll be honest, I'm not really an outdoors a person. I'm more of a typical teenager who likes to stay inside, playing video games, rather than hiking or camping. But just before graduation, one of my teachers gave my friends and me a list of local trails to explore, encouraging us to get outside and enjoy nature. A couple of weeks ago, my friends asked me to join them on a more challenging hike. I said no because I wasn't ready for an eight-mile climb up a steep mountain. Instead, I thought I'd start with an easier trail to get a bit more fit and comfortable with hiking. After deciding to skip the bigger hike, I packed a bag to help me get used to carrying some weight. I filled it with water, about a gallon spread across five bottles, some jerky, dried fruits, and a couple of granola bars. I planned just to do the half-mile loop near the visitor center. On my way to the visitor center, I saw something strange on the side of the road. A dead cat. It looked like it had been lying there for days, maybe even a week. Looking back, I should have taken it as a bad sign, but I brushed it off and kept walking, thinking it was just an unfortunate sight. After around 15 minutes of walking, I reached the start of the half-mile loop. The trail was quiet and beautiful, and nothing unusual happened there. But when I reached the start of Peabody Creek Trail, I thought, 
Why not? And decided to try this trail instead. It was around 6.30 p.m., so the sun was starting to set, and I hadn't brought a flashlight. Not the best idea, but I was too excited to turn back. Peabody Creek Trail is a lot more challenging than the shorter loop. It has a lot of hills, steep stairs, and uneven paths. While I was walking, I suddenly saw other people coming from the opposite direction. I got startled, but then I realized it was someone from my high school with their spouse and dog. We chatted a bit and then went on our separate ways. After they left, I noticed that one of the bridges was broken. It was just a simple log bridge that crossed Peabody Creek, but it had snapped in the middle and fallen into the water. I could have turned around then, but I kept going, thinking I'd find another way across. I eventually found a spot where I had to climb down a steep, seven-foot drop to continue on the trail. It was tricky but doable. The broken bridge probably should have been another warning to turn back, but I kept moving. As I walked along a winding part of the trail, I began to hear something strange to my left, maybe 100 feet up the path. It was a whistle, two short notes, one low and one high. It sounded like a man's voice, so I thought it might be the guy I'd seen earlier, maybe calling his dog. But then I heard the whistle again, this time coming from directly in front of me. The sound was exactly the same, like a perfect repeat. Normally, even repeated sounds have slight differences, but this was robotic and flawless, almost like someone had recorded the whistle and was playing it back. Then I heard it a third time, closer, off to my right. Suddenly, I felt a deep sense of dread, like I was in danger and needed to get out of there immediately. Right then, I heard the whistle a fourth time, even closer on my right side. All four whistles happened within about 15 seconds, covering a distance of at least 500 feet. No person could have moved that fast, especially through the thick trees and brush. The instant I heard the fourth whistle, I turned and began heading back the way I came, practically leaping across the creek to put distance between me and whatever was making that sound. Once I felt far enough away, I broke into a full sprint, running as fast as I could, even though I was exhausted. Now, I don't necessarily believe in paranormal stuff, but I also don't completely rule it out. I usually look for logical explanations first so I don't scare myself. But this experience felt different, something I can't easily explain. Maybe there was a speaker hidden somewhere, playing back recorded whistles, or maybe there was an incredibly fast person out there. But here's the part that really unsettles me. I never saw anyone. That's what makes it so eerie. Whatever or whoever was making those sounds, they were nowhere in sight. This experience left me with a feeling that something was out there. Something that wasn't just a regular hiker. I've been working at a big retail store for three years now, and while it's a job I generally enjoy, it does come with its fair share of strange people. That's just part of working with the public. You never know who you'll run into. However, there was one person I met while working there who was different and not in a good way. This person was the closest I've come to seeing real darkness in someone. To be clear, this story isn't something out of a horror movie. There are no ghosts, no monsters hiding in the shadows. The scariest part is that this was real. Just one of those unsettling people who blend into the everyday world around us. I've changed all the names in the story just to keep things private. As for me, I'm a 24-year-old woman, and over the years, I've had to deal with attention from men at the store. Sometimes they're customers, sometimes co-workers. It's uncomfortable, but I've learned to brush it off or avoid them. I thought I could always manage, but that changed when a man I'll call Ben started working there. Ben was in his mid-thirties. From our first meeting, I sensed something was off. Ben introduced himself, and something about the way he talked felt too friendly and weirdly flirty. He wasn't talking to me like a regular co-worker, but with a certain tone that made me uneasy, like he had an agenda. I tried to keep things short, showing with my body language and tone that I wasn't interested in getting to know him. But he asked for my name, and I didn't have much choice, given that we worked together, 
and it was already on my name tag. Once our first interaction ended, I thought I'd just try to steer clear of him from then on. Unfortunately, that was harder than I expected. Ben worked in a different department, so we didn't have to interact directly, but I would often run into him in the back room or while crossing through the store. Every time I passed him, I felt his eyes on me, and it gave me this creepy, uncomfortable feeling. My gut told me to be cautious, and I couldn't shake the sense that something wasn't right about him. One day, I had to go down an aisle where Ben was restocking shelves. It was a narrow space, and I didn't want to be alone with him there, but I couldn't avoid it. The moment he saw me, he struck up a conversation. He asked about my birthday and then wanted to know how old I was turning. I told him I'd be 25 soon, and he looked genuinely surprised. I've been told I look younger than my age, which probably has something to do with still having braces. But the way he reacted sent alarm bells ringing in my head. I couldn't help but wonder why my age mattered so much to him. Did he prefer me to be younger? The thought made me shudder. Another time, we ended up alone in another aisle, and he asked if I lived by myself. That question alone was a big red flag for me. I told him that I didn't live alone and that I had a few roommates, but he kept asking for more information, pressing me about whether I lived with any male friends, and then even asked if I was dating any of my roommates. I quickly said no, and his reaction was odd. He acted disappointed, almost as if it bothered him that I lived with a man. Later, I found out from some of my female co-workers that I wasn't the only one who felt uncomfortable around Ben. They had also picked up on the strange vibes he gave off and shared stories of him being just as overly friendly and flirty with them as he was with me. One night, I was scrolling through Facebook when his profile popped up in the People You May Know section. Out of curiosity, I clicked on it, and one of his recent posts mentioned something about his time in jail. This caught my attention, so I decided to dig a little deeper. I searched his name online, and what I found made my stomach turn. There was a news article with a headline that read, Man charged with assault of a 12-year-old girl. I clicked on the article and there it was, a mugshot of him, unmistakable with the same neck tattoos. But there was something else. The article didn't use the name Ben. Instead, it had a different name. Let's call it Derek. It seemed he had changed his name, maybe to hide his past from people who didn't know him well. I felt sick realizing that he was hiding a dark history and that my co-workers and I had been working alongside someone dangerous without knowing it. The next day, I went to my manager and told them everything about Ben, including the article I had found. I expressed my concerns, and my manager took it seriously. A few weeks later, I learned that Ben had been fired. Apparently, a 17-year-old employee had reported him for making inappropriate comments. He was also caught drinking on the job, which only added to the list of reasons to let him go. Thinking back, it hit me that he had a pattern first targeting a 12-year-old and then moving on to younger employees at our store, most of them around 17 or 18. It made me sad and angry that people like him could hide their intentions so well, blending into everyday life. I only hope that his victims, especially that young girl, can somehow find peace after what happened. I feel grateful that he's no longer at our store, but the thought of others like him still lurking around is deeply unsettling.